after my first attempt failed to make a cool guitar for the great guitar build of 2021, I was lost. No hope. But a new path of enlightenment revealed itself in the form of Epsilonism. Kiflon, brother, brother. So, the green guitar was obviously stupid, so... <laughs> So instead, we're gonna do this SG in the color scheme of Epsilonism, which is this crazy Scientology parody in GTA 5. And I happen to really like their color scheme of baby blue, white and gold. And that's what we're gonna do. So, all right, so this is an SG type of guitar kit from Pitbull Guitars. So it's affordable, but, but when we put work into it, it should be really cool. So the whole thing is made of mahogany, this quilt top is a veneer, super thin. There's not much time. I will explain as we go along. First step is to cut in a cool headstock shape. So let's go. Next step is dyeing the quilt maple veneers in light blue. I'm doing this before gluing in the neck because there might be glue stains around the neck joint and then you can't dye that anymore. I want to try something unusual. I want to paint the fretboard white. In general, paint is always really thin, even if you put on several layers, but I don't want the frets to feel small in the end, so I want to add some scalloping, only a slight one. Of course, the Ingvi Malmsteen kind of scalloping looks the best, but when playing, actually your finger's gonna be close to the fret, so I just want to add a slight scallop next to the fret. Yeah, I think this is the Ricci Blackmore style of scalloping. Also towards the low E string, the scallop is getting a bit more shallow. And I'm sanding it smooth with sanding paper. I'm protecting the maple top with a few layers of clear coat. Now it's time to set the neck. Putting on the clamps and I leave those clamps on for at least 24 hours. But let's see what I can do in the meantime. Since it's the Epsilonism inspired guitar, let's add the Epsilonism symbol on the headstock. I have printed out the symbol and I was cutting out this stencil. stencil, 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 stencil. Since this is mahogany, we're gonna need to do some grain filling. I'm applying the grain filler, pushing it all in with the grain. Yeah, or at least not sideways. Let it dry, then sand it smooth again. Now I'm masking off all the maple veneers. And then we'll spray a white base coat. The base coat is always formulated a bit thicker. I'm applying two layers. Then I'm doing slight scuff sanding. So the beveled edges of the guitar, I want to spray in white and also the fretboard. And now I am doing the masking.
So the beveled edges of the guitar should remain white. So I'm masking these off and now I'm spraying on the pearlescent paint named Bondi Beach. Luckily I got all these spray cans before the Brexit. I'm doing three layers of that just to be sure. Letting it dry. Now I'm masking off. This isn't really working. When I masked off, I realized this white is way too bright for this now darker than expected blue top. Because I've used the same wood dye on this base that I'm working on and on there the blue is much lighter but the veneer on the base was much paler to begin with so I've been thinking on how to proceed. Unfortunately I don't have a more cream looking white to spray on top. I took a few photos and while looking at the photographs I had the idea since the hardware is gold I could just put gold leaf on the bevel and we would still be in the color scheme of having blue, white and gold. So let's try that. For the painted neck and fretboard it's important to have no crease that you can feel with your hands otherwise this would always be annoying while playing. Alright, so I'm masking off, I'm putting on gold size. I wait until it's dry, then it's a sticky surface. I put on gold leaf, and then I get rid of the excess with a soft brush. And then I mask off and hope that the edges are clean. So let's prepare for two component clear coat. I paint everything. I'm putting as many coats as I can get out of the can. I let it cure, then I scuff sand a little bit, and then I do a second spraying session, also putting on the whole can. It seems like a whole can is a lot, but it's still thin in the end. And you'll be happy to have more so you won't sand through. I let it cure. Now I am sanding. The good thing is that this is a flat top guitar so I can use the machine. So I'm sanding but I'm standing away from the edges. Usually people wet sand but I think with the machine dry sanding works well but the edges and sides I do by hand. This is a feel thing. Once you feel like it's getting slippery then you can move to the next grid but always check with the, your eyes. So now I'm leveling the frets. I'm gonna mark the top of the frets with a sharpie. And make sure that the neck is straight. I level them. For crowning, I use these Japanese crowning files named Little Bone. I have it in two different grids. So yeah, with those I thought it's very easy to get a nice crown because you don't want the top of the fret to be wide. And now it's time to polish the frets. So I'm using this buffing wheel. This is the heavy duty wheel. And then I use this softer wheel. I'm going gently over the frets and the fretboard both at the same time. And then we move on to polishing. This eccentric polishing machine. First is a cutting compound. Then I wipe it off. Then I have this spray to wipe off the uh, compound completely. And then I move on to the finer compound. And then I have a super fine, super high gloss compound at the end. So in general it's glossy, but in some areas there are those low spots. And even though I sprayed three cans of clear coat, it still wasn't thick enough to level sand those out. Now it's time to install the hardware. So I'm installing the tuners, I'm drilling some holes. So those are not the normal kit tuners, those are the upgraded ones, uh, Clusen locking tuners. Because it has a big space, so, so locking tuners are a good idea. Then I put in shielding paint. 
for the bridge I have a roller bridge. That one is from the Northwest Guitars, but there are many similar ones. Just don't get the super cheap Chinese knockoff. You will not have fun with that one. Also, the pickups we have are Tone Rider generators with a Rebel 90 in the middle. One of those wannabe P90s. With the nut, usually I put on strings first and then make adjustments. This is the bone upgrade nut. So I'm really glad I changed my plans and added gold leaf to the beverage instead of the white. And then when adding all the hardware and pickups, I think it came together really nicely. It, it, all, it all makes sense together now. Oh yeah, by the way, I guess there is an online voting. So you will, uh, I put a link in the description where you can vote for me. I'll now go through the pickup sounds with a clean tone. Also, usually SG type of guitars are very top heavy, but this one now has a Bixby and three pickups which add a bit of weight. And also, usually the strap pin is drilled in the middle, but I drilled it a bit higher, which will help to make the neck look up slightly. So, I put the guitar strap on and let's jump around. So, yeah, this is quite good. I mean, it slightly goes down, but my Epiphone SG by this point would have been like this. So, here's my Epiphone SG. Uh, don't look at the headstock, I'm just experimenting with a special tuning. So if I let go, then the neck immediately dives down. And if I jump around, it goes down even further. And even though this also has three pickups, so the top heaviness can be reduced by having a Bixby and by drilling the pin slightly higher. Why isn't Gibson doing that? So overall, I would say I'm four out of five happy with the result. So that concludes the video. I hope you had fun watching. I had fun building it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, leave a like and subscribe and see you in the next video.